Invite us to taste and see that you are good. Father, I thank you that your goodness is what leads men to repentance. You've been good to me. And Father, I pray that as we open your word for the next moments, that you would be glorified in our midst. Father, I pray over our first fruits offering that we're getting ready to take. I thank you that we are going to be blown away by the miracles that follow. Blown away by the miraculous that follows our obedience. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Amen. How many of you know, you know, while we're, I don't have a theme text today or normally I'd make you stand, but we're just going to kind of be all over the place for a minute. Um, How many of you know, I'm going to say this and everybody's going to say amen. How many of the Lord is good? Okay, cool. See, prophecy. I'm just kidding. The Lord is not just good. The Lord is good to me. He's good to you. I think we get this, you know, all my life you've been faithful. You've been so, so good. Right, we sing that song. We, we have this overarching view of the goodness of God. I think we need to sometimes remember personally, he's been good to me. He's not just good as, in his nature and his character as a whole. No, he is personally good to me. Has he been good to anybody else? Amen. Amen. So this morning, I want to take a few moments, uh, and we're going to talk about the first fruit, because at the end of service today, we're going to give. How many of you brought your first fruit with you, and you're ready to give? Uh, We're going to give, and I want you to understand and see some of the, uh, the principles in Scripture, why we do a first fruit, why the Lord instructed us to. Uh, Before we get in there, I want to say a couple things. Number one, if you're joining us online, we want to say welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, If you're watching via YouTube later, thank you for being a part of our channel. Uh, If you are in the room and you didn't know we had a YouTube channel, we do. So go subscribe. We upload our messages every single week. As if you couldn't get enough of me, you'll get a notification that we have uploaded. So follow us on social media. Uh, and, and, And how many of you know the landscape of ministry is shifting? There, there's, there's a sh- it's not a way from gathering, but it's another arm of ministry. It's another weapon in the hand of God. Um, we're right coming down the home stretch of our 100 days to glory. We got about a month left. Yes, one month left, just under a month uh, to the end of our 100 days of glory. And I believe God is setting us up for a great outpouring of his spirit uh, in the potter's house. Amen? Amen. I want to first say a couple things before we jump into this. Number one, um, I told you a couple weeks ago the church was giving a first fruit offering. Uh, In fact, we gave three, totaling $15,000. And we gave it to different ministries. We gave it to a local church. We gave it to a local mission. uh, And we gave it to an international ministry. And we did this at the leading of the Lord. I was talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I would love to give after the first fruit offering came in. And he said to me, that's not faith. I said, okay, then we'll give. And we did. Um, And I'm believing that God is going to, Bible said, the measure that you give, it will be measured back to you. So the measure that we give, so I'm believing God is about to give back into the church. Somebody say yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, secondly, I've had a few people ask me, what is this offering going towards? Number one, I want to tell you this. We are doing this offering because the Lord said do it. Uh, there's no ulterior motive here. The Lord said to do the offering. We're doing a first fruit offering. Uh, as we've prayed, the Lord has laid on us several visionary ideas, several vision uh, pieces of the vision God has given us moving forward. Uh, how many of you know that vision takes money? Yes. Uh, there is, we, we want to do outreach from this church. We believe God has not put Columbus, uh, has not put the potter's house in Columbus to make a dent in the kingdom of the devil. He's put us here in Columbus to destroy the works of the devil. And we want to do outreach. And for far too long, the government has been the arm of outreach for the church. We've left the gap of outreach in the church and we want to close that gap. 
but there's some things around the building that we want to accomplish. And so those are just generic things that it's going to, uh, and those are going to come into, into focus as we move forward. Uh, but I believe today is going to be a day of miracles in this house. I believe it's going to be a day of miracles. I shared a testimony with you last week of someone who joins our church from online, lives in Virginia. Uh, she said she woke up one morning, got a call from a job she hadn't even applied for, hadn't even thought about, and it was a $10,000 raise the day after she gave her first fruit offering to the Lord. Uh, that's just one thing. I'm believing that you're, we're just going to see a multiplied in this room. Uh, y'all need to get your faith up. And if you don't have enough faith, borrow mine. I tell you, I can move a, the whole city with the faith I have this morning and what Jesus is going to do. Amen. Let's talk about the first fruit. Number one, when you talk about the first fruit, you have to talk about the feast, the feast of the first fruits. It occurred on the day after the Sabbath during the barley harvest of spring, which would have been Nisan 17, 18, somewhere around there. The feast was ordered by God in Exodus 13 verses 1 and 2 after he brought the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses was instructed to dedicate all of the first spring, all of the first offspring to be born of humans and animals to God in remembrance of the Israelites' day of deliverance from Egypt. Exodus 34:19 records that all of the firstborn belonged to God. So they would bring their firstborn and dedicate them to the Lord. And the firstborn, listen, you got to pay attention. The firstborn had to be bought back from the Lord. They would dedicate the firstborn of animals and children to the Lord. And they had to be bought back. This meant first children, first animals, first crops, lands, and trees all fell under the law of the first fruits and needed to be dedicated and sanctified under the Lord. Listen, an animal such as a donkey had to be bought back with a substitute lamb or goat. If it wasn't bought back, the neck had to be broken. Now, I hope it doesn't take a biblical scholar to understand that the lamb who bought us back was Jesus. Jesus is the first first fruit. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. See, all the, all the, all the redback hymnal fans in the room can sing with me. Very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more than what? Than the master of the sea. Heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. And the chorus goes on to sing, love lifted me. Y'all know that. I don't have to sing it. But he lifted me up. Jesus was the lamb given to buy me back. Humanity was under the law of first fruits under the old covenant. So humanity was in a place where we had to be dedicated to God or sacrifice unto the Lord. Knowing that humanity could not successfully do either one of those. God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, but he was not under the law. And when the fullness of time had come, God gave his son to redeem us who were under the law, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, we cry, God the Father. And, and so He is the Lamb. And, and if I could take a minute before we even take this offering or talk about it, I got to talk to you about Jesus, the first of the first fruits. We were bought back out of slavery to sin. We were bought back out of the world of sin. We were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20 said we were bought with a price. 1 Peter 1 18 beginning said that you were not redeemed by vain and corruptible things such as the traditions of your forefathers but you were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And I know on this Sunday morning when we're getting ready to take a 
first fruit offering and I'm going to transition from preaching into teaching here in a minute but before I do that I've got to take a minute and help you understand that it is the blood of Jesus that still works it is the blood of Jesus that still redeems it is the blood of Jesus that still saves and heals I know there has been a crop of churches who have risen up to say we're going to make it secret sensitive and we're not going to talk about the blood because it's offensive and we're not going to talk about the blood because it, it scares people and it's disgusting but baby I don't know where you were when he found you I don't know how bad off you were when he found you but it was the blood of Jesus it wasn't a get rich quick scheme it wasn't a five steps how to be better it wasn't how to be a millionaire in 10 days it was the blood of Jesus that reached down and picked me up and washed me white in the blood of the lamb it is still the blood it is still Jesus the first of the first fruit his word said in Ephesians 1 and 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace here's the thing money cannot redeem my sin money cannot cleanse my sin good services cannot remove my sin good preaching cannot remove my sin in, in whom we have redemption through his blood not through our church not through our systems not through our structures in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace in Isaiah 118 Isaiah said come now let us reason together though your sins be as scarlet they will be white as snow and though they be red like crimson they will be white like wool in the book of John 129 the Bible said John was standing on the banks of the Jordan and he lifted up his eyes and he saw the one of whom the wilderness knew all about of whom the crickets and the locusts knew all about because John was in the wilderness saying behold he was saying I'm a voice saying prepare the way of the Lord and on the banks of the Jordan he lifted up his eyes and he saw Jesus and he said behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world in Revelation 1 and 5 the Bible said unto him who loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood in Revelation 7 14 the elder came to John and said who are these singing and John said I don't know but you do and the elder answered and said these are they which have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes white in the blood of the lamb and so before I go on and calm down I wonder if there's anybody in here who is as thankful as I am for the blood of Jesus that redeemed me that washed me that took my sin and cast it as far as the east is from the west he is the lamb the first of the first fruits Jesus the Christ the son of God the son of God he fulfilled the feast when he resurrected from the dead the scripture said in Colossians that he is the firstborn among the dead. He was certainly not the first person to die, but wherever Jesus goes, he gets first place. He was certainly not the first person and he wasn't the last to die, but wherever Jesus goes, he gets first. So the second Jesus went into the grave, everybody else in the grave came second to him because he is the firstborn among the dead. And then when he got up out of the grave, everybody in the grave stayed second to him anyways. And everybody on the earth became second again. He's the first fruit from the dead. Everybody else in history has died and stayed dead. They've died. Some of them have been risen from the dead. But they've all died again. Jesus is the only man to die, to live, to die, to get up from the grave, and he's still alive. He's still alive. 1 Corinthians 15, 20, but now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in the first Adam all die, even so in Christ who is the second Adam, all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. 
afterward those who are Christ that is coming. And because Christ was resurrected, he is alive and we who were spiritually dead can be made new. We can be made new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Galatians 2 and 20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the feast of the first fruits was instituted after they came out of Egypt. How did, how did they come out of Egypt? Well, somewhere along about the last plague, God said, take a lamb. Y'all not hearing me, apparently. God said, take a lamb, a spotless lamb, kill it. Take an olive branch and rub it on the doorposts of your house. How was it that they were delivered from Egypt? It was the blood on the doorpost of the house. Mm. The blood of the lamb. So what about the heart behind the first fruit? It was not just about what they gave to the Lord. It was in how they gave it. Every time we get paid, we bring tithe into the storehouse. According to the scripture. And it's important because the tithe belongs to the Lord. But there is something special when tithe, offering, and first fruits are combined. Because... Today, I believe the fullness of God's blessings are released when we honor God in our finances. First fruit does two things. Number one, first fruit giving acknowledges that God is truly first in your life. And you honor him above everything that you consider special. Colossians 1.17, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. This word preeminence means to have first place or to be supreme. He must be first. Paul is making a statement of fact in Colossians 1. He is before all things, not he will be, he already is. He is the firstborn among the dead. It's a statement of fact, he already is. It is not up for debate whether Jesus is first or not. What's up for debate is whether he's first in my life. Whether he's first in your life. That's what's up for debate. I choose whether he's first in my life. In the heavens, in the atmosphere, in the plan of God, he's first. But is he first in my life? He has to be first. The Bible calls him the head of the church. Ephesians 4.15 said, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. Colossians 2.18 and 19, Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen vainfully puffed up by his own fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head who's the head thank you this section i said who's the head jesus, jesus is the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from god he wants to be first in everything your money your time your efforts your talents, your marriage, your parenting, come on now, your job, he wants to be first. Not just first, but he wants to be everything. Luke 14, 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, sister, wife, brother, children, everybody. If he doesn't hate everybody. Now some of you are like, finally, somebody has given me freedom to feel the way I want to. No, 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 no. That word hate means to love less. If any man come to me and want to be my disciple and does not love his father, mother, wife, children, everybody less than me, 
he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 33, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not everything that he has cannot be my disciple. So it's not just about Jesus being first. It's about him being all. It's about him being enough. Jesus has to be not only first, but he has to be everything to you. Somebody say everything. everything. So first fruit acknowledges that God is first in your life. Number two, first fruit offerings honor God as your source. Somebody say honor. honor. It sanctifies the rest of your income. Amen. Romans eleven sixteen. For if the first fruit is holy, then the whole lump is holy. If the first fruit is holy, then the rest of my money will be sanctified and blessed. Come on now. Now he was speaking to a primarily agrarian culture where they planted and harvest and planted and harvest and they gave the first fruit out of their harvest. And so what they were hearing was, if I, if I sanctify and consecrate and give the first fruit of my increase, then I'm going to come back to a field that is blessed. Because if, if the first fruit is holy, then the whole is holy. In Ezekiel 44 and 30, the best of all first fruits of any kind and every sacrifice of any, Did you hear that? The best. Not the sloppy seconds. The best of all first fruits of any kind. Every sacrifice of any kind from all of your sacrifices, bring it to cause a blessing on the rest of your house the rest of your house today is not about how much you give I pray that you have given to the point that it's a sacrifice because that's what a first fruit offering is it's a sacrifice that's my prayer is that you've given to the point that it's a sacrifice to the Lord but if your sacrifice is one dollar or if it's a thousand dollars or if it's ten thousand I could keep going Whatever your sacrifice is, bring it of any kind to the Lord so that a blessing may come on the rest of your house. The rest of your house. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your barns may be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Bring... And honor the Lord. It's called stewardship. It, it, is, it is found moreover of a man that he might be a steward. 1 Corinthians. It's called stewardship. In, in 1 Corinthians, he's specifically speaking about stewarding the mysteries of God. But stewardship is a kingdom principle. Honor the Lord with all of your possessions. Not just your money, everything you have. Uh, you know what my father used to say to us, um, and I was, um, I always was so irritated when he would say this, both my father and my mother, and she's here today. I'd be so irritated by them saying this, and both of my brothers can agree because we were all slobs. My father would get in my car. And he would say to me, if you don't take care of this, God will never give you anything better than this. I would get so irritated at him. Like, you know what? Go get in your car, okay? And, and then I would, <laughs> I would get in his car and I would leave my fast food bag in his car. And he would say, you can do that in your car. Don't do that in my car. Honor the Lord with all of your possessions. Your car. I'm being convicted by the Holy Spirit right now. I'm going to be straight up vulnerable with you. My check engine light's been on for days. I need to go get it checked. Because if I want better, Dad always used to say, if we want to get there, 
we've got to do here right. Honor the Lord with all of your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase. Here's the promise. Go ahead. So that all of your barns will be filled with plenty. Not just enough. Not barely enough. But that your barns will be full of plenty. You know what that word plenty means? More than enough. Your barns will be full with more than enough and your vats will overflow with new wine. So, so the first feast. The feast began with an offering and it was an offering of the best that they had. Specifically, it was a wave offering, a sheaf or a bundle of the very best of the first harvest of barley which was brought to the priest on the day after the Sabbath and the priest would lift it up before the Lord and wave it. If the sheep, sheaf was accepted, then the whole harvest was accepted. The wave offering was then followed by a burnt offering of a one-year-old male lamb without defects. And then a grain offering of flour moistened with olive oil accompanied by a liquid offering of quart of wine was given as a special gift to the Lord. Why did they do this? Remember in context, they had just come out of Egyptian bondage for 400 years. Multiple generations have only known slavery. They gave a first fruit offering because they were so grateful. It was in view. God commanded it in view. In view of the fact that he had just pulled them out. And they wanted God to continue to walk and they wanted to continue to walk and live in the blessings of God in every area of their life. We today are bringing a first fruit offering in thanks of being led out of spiritual slavery. Come on. I just need, to, I need about 10 of you just to remember, I mean really remember how enslaved to sin you were when he brought you out how messed up you were and today we we bring it in thanks we bring it to honor Jesus who is the first fruit of the harvest of souls that has been set apart by God through his death and resurrection I want our staff and their wives to come